Hey guys, Jake's Garage here. Uh, quick update on the Suburban. Um, the last video I posted, pretty sure you saw it start. That was a crappy video. I apologize for that. So I got a little freaked out when it wouldn't start and um, had to figure out the settings and HP tuners. I swear I didn't read anything about the starter uh, fault checking, keeping it from starting, but whatever. So since then, uh, I'll show you what I've been doing. Um, the wiring is still a mess because my relay box still hasn't shown up. I'm really irritated about this. FedEx can't tell me where it's at and it's just not moving. So come Monday or Tuesday, if it still hasn't moved and I still don't have it, then we're going to obviously have a problem because I won't have it. Uh, this is really preventing me from doing a whole lot else. This I got to finish this. Once this is done, the truck's done. Um, something else that popped up that might help some people out. I couldn't get the alternator to put output anything. It was just the dead 12 volts. Now I mistakenly read uh, or misunderstood some uh, write-ups that said that you only needed the one wire off the back of the alternator, like a one wire alternator, uh, and it would just default to 13.8 volts when spinning. That, uh, if I misunderstood that, then I misunderstood it. Either that or it's just poorly written, but that is not the case. Um, you have to have the exciter wire hooked up. Now on this particular alternator, this is the um, DR44. It is the four pin connector on the back. So it's the one that will function without the ECM. Um, and what I have hooked up here, the orange wire, it's the two middle terminals. The orange wire is the L terminal and the gray wire is the uh, I, F, F, IF, F, FS, I don't know, something like that. But anyway, the field sensing wire. Um, what I did have to do is I did wire super rigged, okay? The orange wire from the L terminal is rigged to this 194 bulb socket, which is off of a spare four wheel drive harness that I had laying around because I couldn't find any other bulb sockets and I was in a hurry. And then it is wired over to the main pink, the switch 12 volt. So what happens is when you turn your key on now, that orange light lights up and I got to look and see if I have a, a, an alternator. I don't think I have an alternator spot in my cluster on this thing, but I might run that bulb inside um, somehow, put it in the dash or somewhere discreet because it's nice. You, you turn the key on, that lights up, you fire the truck up, the light goes out as soon as it starts making voltage. But if the alternator ever fails, that light will come on. So I will be alerted to the fact because the gauge, the voltage gauge in, this, in the square body is kind of... I don't know, it's not really the most accurate gauge in the world. Anyway, long story short, it now charges at 14 some volts, 14.5 volts, something like that, 14.7, it's great. My fuel pressure now is up a few extra PSI. Um, now it's regulated at the filter, so it really can't go above a certain PSI, but it's much stronger now. It's, it's definitely um, got better, stronger fuel pressure when it's running. Um, something else, so the, the interior is coming back together. This is still loose, but it stays in there pretty good on its own. Got the glove box back in, dash pads all tightened down. Um, just have a couple other things to do. Now you'll see in addition to the steering column, I got a tack. Uh, I, I don't know that I necessarily needed a tack, but I wanted a tack. Um, I just like, I don't know, I just like it. Now, a couple of things that were challenging on this is I wanted this sucker way down here but this whole part of the column moves and I thought it was just this I thought it was just this part right here this whole situation moves when you put it in gear so obviously I couldn't put it down there which means I couldn't use a, a hose clamp to hold it in so I used some 3m double stick tape and for now it's fine I didn't want to screw into this because uh, I don't know if I'm keeping this or not I just it is what it is that's how it's going to be for now um I also considered mounting it up here, but that's kind of, I think that's kind of cheesy. So, um, I haven't gotten this to work yet. The E38 ECM requires some changes to make the tack work. Um, I'll see if I can show them to you real quick. They're in engine, uh, I think. No? Yeah, they're in engine under the general tab. And there's actually a section, can you guys even see that? There's actually a section for tack output. And I found a write-up on HP Tuners that tells you to change the type to crank, the resolution high to 14, and the resolution low to 15. Um, the, the tack wires coming out of the E38 ECM, I think it's pin 48 or something. That, go on LT1 swap and um, 
you'll see um, you'll see which pin you're supposed to add. The E38 ECM doesn't come with the wire already in there, so you'll have to you'll have to pop a wire in. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to flash the. Uh, I got to go with the key. I'm going to flash the computer one more time, see if I can get the, the, the tack working. And I also removed some more DTCs, like I missed a couple, a couple of the rear O2s um, that popped up. And there was another one that was like set on second fault, and I guess it, I didn't, it didn't set on the second fault the first time. Um, so I'm just going to basically keep record of when they pop up and just turn them off. Each time I upload a calibration, I'll, I'll knock more of them out. But I think I'm getting pretty close. Oh, the other big news kind of is I took it for a ride. Uh, I don't have video of that because I was excited, but I had a buddy that took some video. So I'll try to get his video incorporated in my video. I don't know what the resolution's gonna look like, but we're gonna try it. Runs really good. It it drives great. The transmission seems to shift through at least four gears. I got some weird little flares, and uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's all new. You know, everything. The trans has been rebuilt. I'm sure there's still fluid pumping into that thing. I'm sure it has to relearn since it's all been flashed. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's supposed to act, but I know that it shifts fine and it runs great i did the gear uh and speedo calibration so it did scale the up the shifting uh shift timings but i didn't run the like the blue cat software i didn't turn off any torque converter lockup i did nothing i just just ran it so um i'm gonna try to get some video today i'm gonna take it for another quick spin i'll take you guys along too okay key on let's write this sucker do a right vehicle. This is with uh, more DTCs, more DTCs removed, and the TAC output enabled. So I'm going to do do not write on the transmission. Write calibration only on the engine. This should be pretty quick. There it goes. Bootloader. Writing calibration goes so fast. Yeah, it's less than a minute. So in less than a minute, I should have a working TAC. We'll see. I'm going to check the trans fluid real quick and then we'll fire it up after I get the scan tool set up to show me my trans temp. Cold start. See if the tack works. Watch your ears. What I'm going to do, so I did 
I do remember reading that I might need to do a thousand ohm or yeah, a thousand ohm resistor between the power wire and the tack signal wire to pull it up to 12 volts. I'm going to do that real quick and see if that gets the tack going and then we'll test this again. Okay. Now let's try it with the 1K resistor. Okay, let's go for a drive. I'm gonna do a little scanning. Do have a check engine light, but I think it's because it's system bank one and two lean because of the uh, uh, O2 sensors dumping out of the headers. Check the scan. I was scanning that whole time. We'll see what we got. 